Uh, good evening. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, City of Geneva's City Council meeting. This is Monday, October 19th, 2015. Uh, my name is Dean Kilberg, Third Ward Alderman, and I'm standing in for uh, Mayor Burns, uh, who's out of town this evening. Um, begin the meeting uh, with uh, reading of the roll. Would you please read the roll? Mike Bruno? Here. Tara Burkhardt? Here. Don Cummings? Here. Dean Kilberg? Here. Craig Maladra? Richard Marks? Here. Jim Merdecki? Here. Mary Sino? Here. Tom Smonian? Here. Ron Singer? Okay, if you'd please uh, stand. Uh, Patty, would you please lead us in the uh, Pledge to the Flag? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first uh, item of business this evening is uh, a proclamation. Uh, for a number of years, uh, Geneva has recognized uh, Red Ribbon Week in October. And uh, this evening, we have uh, a, rep a representative of Geneva High School, uh, as well as uh, a faculty member that's involved, uh, been involved with the program for a number of years. Uh, we have with us uh, Maddie Hagen and uh, Becky Furnish. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you have some things you'd like to share with the community and uh, we'll uh, like to bring you to the podium and uh, uh, give you some time uh, if you'd like. Good evening, my name is Madison Hagen and I would like to thank you for your time this, tonight. Um, I'm here to discuss Red Ribbon Week and the importance of it. Red Ribbon Week is a remembrance of an officer that died in the line of duty, Kiki Camarino. And his family, after his death, decided to devote um, a week to him for uh, bringing awareness to substance abuse. During Red Ribbon Week, we spread awareness around the whole entire city by putting up signs and ribbons all around just to bring awareness to the substance abuse. And my experience with substance abuse, my cousin actually passed away due to overdose of a substance abuse two years ago. And it was really tragic, and it's hard to deal with from a day-to-day -day basis, but we're dealing with it, and I think it's really important to spread the awareness because it is a big issue around the world. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we certainly appreciate uh, your presence here this evening and uh, uh, reminding the community of the importance of uh, uh, the theme of Red Ribbon Week as we, we look at uh, uh, our communities and, and the day-to-day -day challenges that we have with both prescription drugs as well as uh, uh, illegal drugs uh, in the Fox Valley. And uh, I know that uh, uh, we continue, and you continue your efforts through Ribbon Week, Red Ribbon Week to, uh, to educate the community, build awareness, and I know that uh, uh, your activities at the high school uh, are important, and uh, sometimes uh, uh, we, uh, we wonder if we're making progress, but uh, we never should quit trying. And uh, uh, again, uh, I, I thank you for your time this evening, and uh, I, uh, is there anyone with the council that would like to, to comment uh, on Red Ribbon Week? How many... Uh, 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 Becky, how many years have we been uh, been uh, uh, involved with Red, Red Whip, Ribbon Week here with the city and the di school districts? SAD Club is a club that stands for Students Against Destructive Decisions, and we are a volunteer club, but we also try to send students towards the right path. We give opportunities such as babysitting for the kids, like Becky said. 
at the Lazarus House. We also do local um, 5K walks for breast cancer or something like that. And we just base, we like to help the community and do what we can. Very good. Yeah, well, when people th uh, hear the name Students Against Destructive Decisions, they kind of, uh, it's kind of a turnoff. So we're thinking about changing the name. We haven't quite got any ideas yet, but we're trying to make it sound more appealing to the general mass of people. Very good. Okay, I'll read the proclamation and I'll, uh, I'd like to present that to you. Uh, this is signed by Mayor Burns. Uh, uh, Proclamation Red Ribbon Week, October 26th to the 30th, 2015. Whereas it is imperative that visible, unified prevention, education, and asset building efforts by community members be launched to reduce the demand and availability for drugs. And whereas the Illinois Drug Education Alliance, Governor's Office, State of Illinois, Community Intervention Team, Geneva Coalition for Youth, SAD, and MAD Illinois, are sponsoring the Red Ribbon uh, campaign offering <coughs> citizens the opportunity to demonstrate their commitment to drug-free lifestyles and promotion of the healthy development of all citizens, young, middle, and elderly. And whereas business, government, law, enforcement, schools, religious institutions, service organizations, youth physicians, senior citizens, military sports teams, and individuals would demonstrate their commitment to drug-free, healthy lifestyles by wearing and displaying red ribbons during this week-long campaign and carry the spirit and message of this week into each day this year until our next Red Ribbon, October 2016. And whereas the City of Geneva further commits its resources to ensure the success of the Red Ribbon uh, campaign throughout this year until Red Ribbon 2016. Now therefore, it, it, uh, be it resolved, the City of Geneva does hereby support October 26th through the 30th, 2015 as Red Ribbon Week and encourages its citizens to participate in alcohol and other drug education and prevention activities, making a visible statement that we are strongly committed to a drug-free community. Signed uh, by uh, Mayor Kevin Burns this uh, 19th day of October 2015. Thank you. Okay, item four, amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments? I want to take a vote on that. Okay, I'm sorry. We'll need to take a vote on those. Those in favor of the proclamation. We need a, we need a motion and a second. Okay, is there I'll a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Move, moved by Mark, seconded by um, Bruno. Bruno. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, item four, uh, amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments this evening? Okay. <laughs> item five, the omnibus agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There uh, will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council member or citizen so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the omnibus agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Is there a, a motion to approve so moved. the Second. omnibus agenda? Moved by Mark, seconded by uh, Bruno. Bruno. Uh, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Excuse me, we need to read the roll on that. <clears throat> Richard, Ma Richard Marks. Aye. Jim Radecki. Aye. Mary Sino. Aye. Tom Simonian. Aye. Mike Bruno. Aye. Tara Burkhart. Aye. Don Cummings. Aye. Dean Kilberg. Aye. Carries. Item six, um, approved minutes of the, okay, that was addressed under the omnibus agenda. Uh, other items, uh, we have on the agenda would be municipal pill, uh, bills for payment in the amount of uh, $5,887,271.13 recommended by the city administrator. Is there a motion to approve the uh, municipal bills for payment? Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we approve and pay the bills as read. Uh, the individual line items to add up to that total can be found in tonight's packet on the Geneva website. Is there a second? Second. Second, <coughs> second by Sino. 
Okay. Any discussion? Would you please read the roll? Richard Marks? Aye. Jim Redecki? Aye. Mary Sino? Aye. Tom Simonian? Aye. Mike Bruno? Aye. Tara Burkhart? Aye. Don Cummings? Aye. Dean Kilberg? Aye. Item 11, Committee of the Whole Items of Business. Uh, item uh, A, we have uh, recommend resolution number 2015-107, authorizing a bid waiver and contract for design of wastewater treat uh, plant improvements by CDM Smith in the amount not to exceed $698,413, no cents. Is there a motion to approve? Moved by Sino. Second. Seconded by Radecki. Okay, the floor is open for discussion. Um, Hearing none. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we're okay. Um, Rich, I did have one question this evening, and uh, these were some questions were was given to uh, given to me by a citizen that uh, that probably knows a lot more about this than I do. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to uh, to ask this one question in, re in regard to uh, uh, the anaerobic digesters uh, and. Uh, 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 I understand that the microorganisms in the anaerobic digesters release pee back into solution. Uh, do we need to address this pee before uh, it gets to the head end of the plant? We received uh, your questions. Yeah. Took the word right A little over an hour and a half ago. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I realize that. And the thing been... is, I guess I, I just wanted to, wanted to let you know that uh, there are people that are interested in this uh, Absolutely, in this and they're excellent questions. Yeah. They're legitimate questions, and we're working. We want to ensure that we're giving the city council accurate information sure. and not off the cuff. Uh, our consultant was not here tonight. They were not planning on being here tonight. So if it, the city council is comfortable with it, uh, we would like some time to answer these questions and make sure that we're answering them in a full and proper manner. I can appreciate that. No. The only concern we have with staff, though, is that looking at the timeline, even though this plan is expected, it has to be online uh, by July of 2017, uh, there's, there's about 90 days of unaccounted for time between now and then, and that any delay uh, as we move forward with this project risks, uh, that has to account for weather delays, labor shortages, material shortages. Um, we can't answer these questions, and we have the information that's available. It's just we weren't able to get the information out no, to the city council tonight. No, that's fine. I think the one thing about these questions, though, is I think it will help not only myself, but the rest of the council maybe better understand uh, some of, the, uh, some of the, uh, the decisions as it relates to this project that might be of interest to them and, and help them understand as we move forward and there are additional expenses down the road. Uh, as the project comes together and and they will yeah, yeah. the questions are more related to uh, the facility plan update more than the design contract that's in front of the city council tonight uh, we do have the information uh, Bob and I it's kind of like flashbacks to our college days where we were flipping through the facility plan update and we both realized that we were just simply not going to be able to answer all eight no that's before fair. tonight and I don't think that Anything should be held up this evening as a result of it, but um, we, we we're confident we can get the information to you by the close of business tomorrow. No, it doesn't even have to be that that quickly. I'm I'm just saying though that I think it would be good if uh, if if you could pull um, pull that information together and then disseminate it to the rest of the council. So, just as a suggestion, uh, because I think those are. Questions that, as you noted, might be being asked by certain residents. Would it be appropriate for staff to come back next Monday, read the questions, and then have the answers so not only the council gets the information, but the audience gets the information as well? No, that'd be fine. Okay. That'd be fine. I just write it up as a special committee, the whole report. And just, just, just as an update? Just as an update would be great. Good. Can do. Thank you. Good. No, I didn't mean to to uh, catch you off guard this this evening and I know that I got that information to you very late this afternoon so you got the heart rate up <laughs> <laughs> no that's great okay thank you thank you 
Mike. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's not on, on this point, but uh, if, if you'd be able to stick around for just a few minutes for new business, there might be a question you might be able to answer. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Uh, there are no further uh, questions of Mr. Babica, then uh, I take it we're prepared to vote. Uh, would you please read the roll? Richard Marks? Nay. Jim Radecki? Aye. Mary Sino? Aye. Tom Simonian? Nay. Mike Bruno? Aye. Tara Burkhart? Aye. John Cummings? Aye. Dean Kilberg? Aye. Okay. It passed. 6-2. Six 6-2. Two. Six two. Okay. Uh, that brings us to uh, item 11, uh, presentation of ordinance, petitions, resolutions, and bid awards. I don't believe we have anything under item 12 this evening. Uh, I believe, though, that we do have uh, maybe some discussion as it relates to new business, that there's uh, uh, some uh, something that uh, Mr. Bruno would like to bring forward. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, at your uh, uh, individual spots, uh, Alderman uh, Burkhart and I had... Uh, been working on a, a, a parking complaint that we've uh, we've had. If you can uh, take these uh, diagrams, uh, let me let me get a copy for Mary. Here. Uh, it it came up. There are two block faces. If you go to the second page, uh, we, we've had we've had complaints that uh, South Fourth Street um, between. Fulton and Franklin, uh, uh, it is very difficult to back out of it. it, it these two block faces are unique in the uh, downtown area, or seem to be unique according to my, uh, my analysis, in that they're the, the older, narrower streets. Uh, there is parking two sides, and uh, it makes it difficult to, uh, for residents to back out into that street. Uh, all the other streets are either parking one side, highly restricted to uh, to residents there, or, uh, or wider streets with diagonal parking. So these two that are highlighted in orange on that second page um, are unique. Uh, there had been an ongoing discussion with staff about, um, you know, if there's a way to help mitigate this. Uh, you know, we didn't want to get into complex uh, ordinance or ambiguous ordinance re rewriting. Uh, it had come up the possibility of removing parking on one side. It had come up the possibility of just putting signs to, you know, to uh, no parking between signs to, to create these private drives, a little bigger buffer, a little better trajectory. Um, so uh, uh, Alderman Burkhart and I wanted to run this up. The flagpole is to, uh, if, if there was an appetite to uh, um, to do something simple, manageable um, uh, that might address these particular concerns on these block faces. Uh, we've also got uh, uh, those two households, the uh, Abel and the Mackin households, uh, uh, in the audience that uh, uh, I'd, I'd invite up to uh, the podium if you're interested in. Uh, Good evening. Uh, uh, procedure is, is you introduce yourself and uh, uh, give us your name and address, and then uh, anything that you'd like to share as it relates to your concerns uh, are welcome. Perfect. My name is Jason Abel, uh, 322 South 4th Street. This is my wife, Letty, Letty Abel. Abel. 322 South 4th. Hi. And I'm uh, Bill Mackin, 310 South 4th Street, and my wife, Mary Catherine. Great. Thanks for coming this evening. We have just a couple of handouts to show you guys some pictures of uh, what we face um, each day. Unfortunately, we brought a couple of copies, but you can flip through and, and share. Um, we we do have this diagram, so we have a little we have a pretty good visual of what you're talking about. So for some reason, those two blocks are about the only two in downtown that don't have uh, parking only on one side. Um, not exactly sure why that is, but uh, it does make for a very tight, very dangerous area. We do have a 15-year-old and a 12-year-old. 15-year-old has a learner's permit. Very challenging to back out, as you can imagine, and even pull in when people park over our driveways. You'll see in the pictures, um, they hang over the driveway. They 
there's really, um, I guess I don't follow that these two blocks would be the only two in town that, that don't have a one way, um, one side only. And every festival that comes to town on the weekends, they always put no parking on that side, of, on our side of the street. So the city obviously is aware that it's a dangerous street when there's crowds. So we would like to, uh, you know, get some parking ease there, try to get no parking on our side of the street, on our house side of the street. You're only talking about probably five or eight spots, maybe. Probably more like Is that eight. the west side? Yeah, so that's the west side, yep. It, and you can't pass, like, if people are parked on both sides, and you're going this way, and someone's coming this way, yeah. you either have to back up, so let's back up. Can you approach the microphone? Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> if, um, if people are parked on both sides of the street, and you're going down the street and someone's coming towards you, one of the cars either has to back up or mm -hmm. pull into somebody's driveway and wait, and it's, it's very difficult. They'll and pull it, in our driveway and like, wave you through, and you're going, no, I live there. you yeah. got to come out of my driveway so I can go in it. Yeah. Um, so a couple of no parking signs is uh, all we're asking. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any, any comment? Uh, Mike, did, did you want to share any more? If, uh, if there's no more oh, comment from the residents. Sure. Or? I'm sorry, Dr. Mack. Yeah, actually the other, um, it, as my wife was pointing out, in the winter it just get, does get more compressed with the, with the snow. Um, uh, we've had a little more of a problem because we cut our driveway in half uh, with some, we used to be a double driveway and now we're a very narrow single driveway, so it does make it a little tougher to get out than it had been you know, before uh, this summer. It looks like there's no way then, once you, you pull into your garages and then about the only way out, there's no way that you can really navigate a turn and uh, so it's always a, a case when you leave, you have to back out onto 4th Street. And because there's no stop sign, because there's no stop sign at um, 4th and Fulton, mm -hmm. you know, if you're backing out and someone's flying down, it's like from the train. When they get out of the train, man, they just yeah. fly, you know, right down our and it's because we can't see if there's like three SUVs, if there's one at this end of the driveway, one at this end, and then a whole bunch of cars behind, you're like, I hope nothing's coming. <laughs> so. Is there, is there a stop sign at Franklin? I can't recall. Franklin North South, is there, there, is. there are stop signs by yeah. the church, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep, there is. There and is. it doesn't, you know, that's another thing. It doesn't say two-way stop underneath the stop sign on Fulton. And at a minimum, that should say two-way stop because there's accidents there on a regular basis. Please report on that. Okay. Uh, has there been a police department recommendation on this, uh, Ms. McKittrick? I know that it's been discussed uh, between Public Works and Police Department and the Alderman, um, and uh, I, I believe the last discussion coming from uh, the police department was to either use signage to prevent the driveways from being blocked because that was one issue and or to um, possibly eliminate uh, a couple of spaces as opposed to the entire block. Um, the police department pointed out that, um, you know, whatever we do here, we need to, to understand that we will be getting the same requests across town. So, um, downtown parking is a premium and we just need to be very careful about eliminating it obviously we want to make sure that everybody's safe and that no one is getting hurt or backing into other cars you know so that is a top priority uh, but at the same time we get a lot of these requests um, pretty much on a weekly basis from uh, residents asking us to eliminate parking spaces to make it more convenient to maneuver. So that's just something that they recommended that we keep in mind and keep the spaces that are eliminated to a minimum as opposed to the entire block. And I guess uh, can Alderman I, can, can I respond to that expand on second? that. Can I respond to that? Sure. Um, because <clears throat> to me, I think you have precedent in the historic area of downtown that would say this street shouldn't have parking on it. So. While you have, um, while you have uh, other areas and people asking you for that same request, here you've got precedent to say this is weird that this one little block has parking on both sides. Nobody can navigate, and so it's pretty 
Um, it, well, it's much easier. It's not pretty easy, but it's much easier. How's that? And uh, and we're all right, uh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We we are certainly cognizant of of, of all the issues. Um, you know, my my thinking and our, and our bringing it here to discuss. Um, I th my thinking hinges on these are unique block faces. Uh, I I don't think there's anyone who doesn't appreciate the super prime location, and and we we just it, we're very sensitive to losing parking spaces. Um, you know, near Little Traveler by the church, right off Third Street. Um, one of my concerns and discussions with staff was that there be some definition so that uh, it recognizes the uniqueness of the situation so that ordinance wouldn't leave open a, a, a huge loophole that anyone who doesn't like backing out of their driveway can, can ask for signage or eliminate parking. Um, so, you know, we, we can't decide anything here tonight, but, um, you know, uh, Alderman Burkhart and myself, we wanted to run it up the flagpole uh, to, to take the temperature to see if there was a sense that we would consider uh, staff reviewing ordinance or somehow implementing signs. And I, I guess uh, for uh, uh, Director Babka, I'm not sure what the... Basically, I was just the cost of signage, you know, like do not park between these signs type things. I'm not sure if we have a number on those. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I gave you that question 15 seconds ago. You should have <laughs> The decision to enact a limited parking or no parking ban is derived and comes from the police department through the police chief. Right. Conversation with the city administrator. It's then enacted upon by the city council. Uh, is there money within the budget, within the public works budget, to install signs throughout the city? Of course there is. So it would be a, a question from our perspective, a simple perspective of the installation of the signs and material and staff time. Once, of course, it's enacted by the city council, and you're the ones that have to weigh the, the cost of addressing the residents' concerns as opposed to the lack of parking across from St. James Episcopal Church. So there are a number of constraints that, that you all have to decide, and I'm going to sit back and wait for your answer. Thank you. Good. Uh, no parking. Oh. Just for reference, no parking signs about $25. The post is about another 5 The installation of oh, cost is probably about $50 worth of service time. Okay. So each sign would be about... About a hundred dollars to install. See, see marks. Okay. Jason, uh, did you have you had a conversation with the church about your concerns at all, or uh, have you had any dialogue no, with? We uh, haven't, but I don't think much comes. Not not much of it is from the church. Um, you know, they have a parking behind them. Mm -hmm. On Sundays, maybe there's one or two cars on our side of the street. Most are on the other side of the street, where they park down uh, Fulton or Franklin, okay. um, and. You know, maybe there's even a way to put up a sign that says no parking except Sundays before noon or something so that the church, if they need the parking, could do that. But generally, it's not the church that's the problem. It's the people that come to town for shopping and, and that sort of thing. They can always use the, the train lot or whatever. I'm sure that that is not fully used on a regular basis. Okay, okay well... Uh there's just one little... Thing. I'm sorry. I don't... I think it's important that you you understand it's not just us, but what, what what's so critical is we have parking on two sides of the street and your everyday person coming down cannot pass. So it's impossible to pass on this street if you're just coming down the street. You either have to find somewhere to put your car, back it all the way up. We've had people back all the way up, wait on the corner, block traffic. So it's it's So you're saying when the, you've got vehicles parked on both sides there's not enough width there it's, for two right. cars pass. to pass so, safely that's probably the that's the thing the that that is also a concern for um, the community okay well um alderman bruno and uh, alderman burkhardt um, i've spent a lot of time on this block since this issue came up a couple of months ago and so i will um back up mr ebel saying i i think the parkers there based on when i see the 
the most um, uh, congestion is uh, shoppers, but I, I think also probably downtown employees. I mean, it is a prime spot if you work at Little Traveler or Graham's. You know, you could park there on 4th Street, and um, uh, then it could be some metro commuters only if you're going in on a late train, though it's after 8.30, so you'd have to be on, like, the 9.17 or um, something like that. Um, we figured there's probably about 12 parking spots on one side of that street. Uh, that would be think. a good guess for one block face. And so one thing we had discussed, which I liked initially, was um, basically from the driveway... Uh, the Ebbles driveway to the north, then to up to uh, Franklin would be no parking, and then from the the uh, Mackins driveway down to Fulton would be no parking. So you'd only have parking between their two driveways, kind of a but to the corner to the driveway to be free. Um, but that probably only leaves you with about five spots on that block because their driveways are located quite a bit of a ways away. So. Um, just, um, Do you know how many that would be eliminating? Or? I think it would, I, I think we figured probably eliminating seven if we did something like that. So you probably only have five between their two two driveways. That was Chief Maxson's estimate. I trust him better than, more than me on the car lengths. Um, but it is definitely like almost like kind of one lane road when you do have that. But I, I will say I've also passed by and there's not always cars on both sides of the street. It's, there's certain days where there's, six cars on the whole block but there's certainly like i said every time i'm downtown i've been driving by and there are plenty of times when there are and people hanging over um they have a really especially the mackins have a really tight turnaround out of that driveway of theirs thank you okay pardon me uh alderman simonian uh thank you and then alderman sino mayor pro tem uh <laughs> I have a, I, I'd like to reverse this and say, what if there was just parking on one side and we went to the police and fire and said, we want to add parking to the other side? Would they say yes or would they say no? Because after seeing those pictures and listening to some of this, my guess would, if it was reversed, they'd probably say no, we don't feel comfortable or we'd have to have some kind of a, uh, a different scenario. So if their response to that would be, on the reverse would be no, we wouldn't feel comfortable putting parking on both sides. Then I think that we should take a look at this and 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 uh, and figure out a way to uh, to make it work. But it doesn't look pretty on the pictures that way right. handed out. So just a thought. Thank you. Good, Alderman Cino. All right. Um, would you guys be agreeable to Alderman Burkhardt's suggestion of? The signage, just taking those, what we thought maybe seven spaces away. Would that? I, I mean, think, I I would I agree. I think just eliminating parking on your side. But you're still going to have that one way. Right. Traffic. Right. Um, and then they're just going to pull in front of our driveway because the other side of the road's going to be full. They're going to pull in front of our driveway so that one car can pass at a time. Right. Anything will help. But it's not. But it's not no, I would be agreeable to to not allowing parking on your side of the street. I think there's several streets, like you say, in that area that there's only parking allowed on one side. Right. So. Uh, Alderman uh, Radecki. Uh, what's your best guess at how many days in an average year that this is really a problem? I mean, most is it? Saturdays, most Fridays, I would say probably like 150. Okay. I would say from like 10 in the morning until like maybe three in the afternoon, it's really bad. Because you've got the shoppers, you've got the people at the lunch, you have the, you know, the people at the train, you know, that is like a really bad, day. Yeah. and then on the weekend. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify, because originally it said, well, you know, when the festivals are going, but that's not the case. The it's not just goes, Swedish day. better for us, because they put the, the no put parking no signs on our gotcha. side of the street by the police. Because they want people to Because they know that that's tough. Yeah. yeah. And then oh. they pull them out the next day after the festival's over, there you go. and it goes back. Yeah, okay. <laughs> got it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I got it. Yep. Um, I guess my question is for the aldermen in the ward. Have you guys talked to any of the merchants? Have they come forward or have you had discussions we, with? We haven't discussed it with them yet, but that was a, that's an important point. I, I, I presumed foregone that merchants would be opposed to losing that much uh, parking, and I, I would be um, I would be very sympathetic to that. 
um, I, I would probably, um, I would recognize that as a, as a huge hurdle. I don't know that I would even, I could even vote for eliminating all of it. Um, but uh, I, I guess what we're doing here is just seeing if there's a, a consensus to have staff review this to revise anything regarding this. Actually, one last point, if I could, I'd, I'd feel bad if I didn't mention it. Just doing what I do, I do have to be at Delnor or Century Page within about 30 minutes. And it hasn't come up yet where the few extra minutes that it takes navigating out of there has cost anybody their life or anything. But I, you know, I, I would feel bad if that happened and I didn't say something, you know, as far as uh, getting through there. Because sometimes for what we do it, particularly with the, with the heart attacks and getting the artery open, it's um, a few minutes does make a difference. Well, I could see if you were home and you had a six o'clock train letting out, that would be probably a time when you might, it could take a couple of minutes to get out. You wouldn't want to be on the table then. <laughs> I would not want to be on the table any time. <laughs> no, that's a good point. I appreciate it. Uh, I think the best thing this evening, uh, we're not going to get this resolved tonight, but uh, I'd uh, maybe uh, we refer this to staff and, and get the two aldermen that are directly involved with it as well, uh, uh, possibly uh, trying to come up with some type of a solution uh, that uh, it's agreeable, acceptable to all parties. And there's going to be some give and take, I'm sure, with this. But uh, uh, it does appear that there's something here that needs uh, needs attention. And uh, let's see what uh, what staff and our aldermen come up with. Okay. Great. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And uh, we can, I'm sure that the two aldermen involved will keep you informed as this develops, okay? Okay, I think, is there any other new business? Uh, I just, uh, I don't know if you saw the article today. I just wanted to, to uh, it was in Kane County Connects, and it was a nice article about the Kane County Cougars. And, uh, and uh, the Kane County Cougars were ranked uh, and Geneva was ranked as the fifth best minor league baseball town in the United States. And that involves really uh, several hundred uh, communities that have uh, minor league baseball. And, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're in the ranks of uh, communities such as uh, Omaha, Nebraska, Des Moines, Columbus, Ohio, Durham, <coughs> North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. I think we're probably one of, we may well be the only Class A ball club that uh, receive this recognition. So it's a real credit to the community, uh, to uh, the Kane County Board for uh, bringing the Cougars to Geneva and uh, to the franchise, to the owners of the Cougars as well, and, uh, and the attendance as well as last year, uh, drawing over 400,000 fans to Geneva. I think that's uh, quite a tribute. And I think that uh, over the course of the 25 years that we've had minor league baseball here in Geneva, over 10,000 fans have attended games and that is uh, a record for uh, a minor league franchise, a Class A minor league franchise. So, ten million. Ten million. Ten million. Yeah. <laughs> ten million fans. So, uh, a lot of people through the turnstiles. So, again, uh, something uh, something that we can use to promote Geneva. So, mm -hmm. Tom. Uh, thank you, Alderman. I just wanted to pass along our condolences for Alderman Singer's the passing of his sister. On behalf of the city council, you bet. I'll speak on all your behalfs. Yep, Thank our you. thoughts and prayers go out to Ron and his family. Uh, that's where Ron is, I believe, this evening. So, uh, with that, if we have no further business, so moved. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion. No. Oh, oh I'm no, sorry. No. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Babica. Just wanted to point out to the city council last weekend, uh, the art guild was at the public works facility for their artworks oh, yeah. display. Uh, it was one of the sidebars of that. The local high school painted five of my snow plows. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with some exceptionally quality, high quality, we were pleasantly surprised uh, artwork uh, that is also on the city's web page. If you haven't had the opportunity to take a look at them, I would strongly encourage you to. Uh, my staff is uh, kind of elbowing each other about who gets to take the Viking plow out. <laughs> <laughs> 
you haven't taken a look at them, it might be something you might want to take a look at. Thank you. Okay, Thank thanks. You. Thank you. Okay, a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Moved by Simonian, seconded by Sino. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. <laughs>